Do you think the manipulation might be broken sooner rather than later here? Obviously, it's a timing issue. We discussed this before. You never know when. Um, but are you seeing any signs that, that that system is becoming more fragile? I, I actually, I've been thinking of late as to whether some of those actors have left the stage. You know, it used to be, when I first got involved in this, in 2008 and 9 and then through 2012 and into 15 and 16, you know, you'd just be sailing along and in the middle of the day, the bottom would just drop out. Or at the most odd times, whether a Sunday evening or like a, you know, a Tuesday at 10 o'clock Eastern, something like that, all of a sudden, there'd just be this rush of volume you know, compared to any other times of day and then boom, you know, price just falls like $20 in gold, you know, and 60 cents in silver. That doesn't happen anymore, or at least infrequently, or or at least less frequently than it did. And so I wonder if a couple of things have actually had maybe a greater impact or maybe the impact that we'd hope. One being the Basel III changes, um, trying to force these banks out of that paper game into more physical. Uh, but then also those convictions uh, at J.P. Morgan and the you know almost billion dollar fines that they had to pay. I mean, when you take the former head of precious metals trading for uh, J.P. Morgan and you convict him, and I don't know if he's been sentenced yet, but Michael Nowak is is still awaiting. I mean, he may be end up doing some time in the hole for for overseeing that operation. Put those things in there. I, we might be seeing finally banks stepping away from that. I mean, I just saw a, a news article to record this this morning about HSBC had decided to get out of the industrial metal business altogether a couple of years ago. Now they just petitioned and quit the LME uh, this month here in December. So the manipulation part of it, and again, much of that I always felt was just done by bank trading desks for profit because they could. That may be easing. Um, in this turnaround this fall, silver has led the metals and the miners down as the dollar rallied. But silver also bottomed first. Silver bottomed back on the 1st of September where gold really had this kind of floor that it put in in October and November instead. And so silver, where it led everything down, has been leading things back up. Gold and the miners. Um, and that, that may very well... Uh, continue. The part of this bottoming process in silver is we were able to monitor the hedge funds that trade silver futures get extremely short four times in the last 90 days. In doing so, they left what are called the swap dealers uh, on the, that category in the Commitment of Trades Report. And what are swaps? Those are futures and options. Uh, those are derivatives. And who deals those? The banks. Okay, so the banks were getting long while the while these hedge funds were getting short. Well, that's just an inverse of what we've always seen in the past where the banks are short and the speculators are long and then the price drops out and they, you know, and they get ruined and the banks profit. Well, hey, lo and behold, four times in the last 90 days, those speculators have been ruined by spikes to the upside and short squeezes. So there are some, you know, these kind of fundamental kind of ancillary changes that are kind of taking place in the structure of how this works. Now, whether that'll continue, we'll see. You know, if price rallies, as I expect, next year and into 24, how actively will the banks supply the short positions that the speculators take long? We'll we'll just have to see. If they don't, um, that could exacerbate the moves to the upside. But But I do sense less intervention on a grand scale than what we, you know, saw all the way, I don't know, up until a few years ago. So it'll be interesting to see if that continues.